Welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman, and we're talking about how to get to know God intimately. And all through the months, we've talked about, about every subject in the Bible because you have to take the whole Bible in order to understand God's ways and his thoughts and, and, and get to know him intimately. And right now, we're talking about how the Garden of Eden was lost when Adam and Eve sinned, and then they were removed from the Garden. And now we're talking about how God restored the, at the, 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 the Garden of Eden with a new heaven and a new earth, just like it was in the beginning, before there was no sin. There was a new earth, there was a new heaven in the Garden of Eden. But now, like I said, it's going to take 7,000 years for God to fulfill that and have another new heaven and a new earth in the Garden of Eden like it was before Adam sinned. And so now we've come to the place where Jesus then has on the, been on the cross, he's been crucified, and then his physical body was put in a physical grave, and then Jesus, as a dead human spirit, descended into Sheol, the spiritual grave called Sheol, or Hades, or Hell. Now, first of all, how do I know that Jesus went to Hell? And, 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 and you can only go by what the Bible says. And in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 40, and I could give that to you by memory, well, I will. Jesus said, even as Jonah was in the belly of the will three days and three nights, so must the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. Now, I'll just read it right out of the Bible here. I've come to verse 40. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So what's in the heart of the earth? According to the scriptures, hell is in the heart of the earth. So Jesus said, he went into hell. He, even as Jonah was in the belly of the whale. Now, you notice that. Even as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale. So this, this really happened. Jonah really was in the belly of the whale. See, some people say, ah, that couldn't be, that's impossible. Well, Jesus himself confirms it right here. He said, Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights, and so must the, heart, the, the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. All right, well, Jonah. Well, then, remember what we saw here in Luke. Let me take you back to Luke, uh, end of Luke real quick again. Verse 44. And he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which are written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Well, now we're talking about the prophets. Jonah's a, mi Jonah's a minor, minor prophet. So whatever Jonah says about Jesus, ha Jesus has to, has to fulfill. So then we just go ahead and we find our way to Jonah. And, and, and we, and we um, pick it up here in verse uh, 17 of Jonah. So I'm going to back up. Here we go. And verse 17 of chapter 1. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Whoa! And Jesus was in the heart of the earth, what? Three days, three nights. So this is a type and shadow of Jesus in hell. And then Jonah cried to the Lord his God from the fish's belly, and he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried. Remember, the spirit, Jesus descended into the spiritual grave called Sheol, or Hades or hell. And you heard my voice, for you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the floods surrounded me, and all your billows and all your waves passed over me. Then I said, I've been cast out of your sight, yet I'll look again toward your holy temple. The waters surrounded me, even to my soul. The deep closed around me. Weeds are wrapped around my head. That's demons. And went down to the moorings of the mountains. The earth with its bars closed behind me forever, yet you have brought me up, brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. So this is not a man in paradise. Some people say that when Jesus died on the cross, he, he, as a spirit, human spirit, he went to paradise. And then after three days and nights, he came back into his body. Well, there's something really, really, really wrong with this. It was man that sinned, not his physical body. Man sinned. Man was to be in charge of his physical body. Adam was to tell, his, was to tell Eve, or Eve should have been the one too, that said, look, I'm tempted to eat of that fruit, but I'm not going to do it. See, the body is in charge of the human spirit or the physical body, rather. And so then, Jesus then, it didn't, he himself, his body's in the physical grave, but Jesus is in hell. And again, if you don't understand the difference between, you know, like 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, I pray God that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. You have to understand that, or you'll be confused when it comes time for the, to understand the scriptures or redemption. 
I am a spirit, and you are. I used to, as a human spirit, I used to have the nature of sin and death. Then I got born again. I asked Jesus to come into my heart, and I was taken from the power of darkness, transferred to the kingdom of the Son of his love, as the born again, regenerated human spirit, Colossians, Colossians 1.13. And so then, I live in this physical body. Now, when I, my, I was changed, I became a new creation in Christ Jesus when I was born again, but my flesh, my physical body did not change. I still have to deal with the lustful, sinful desires of the flesh. So then, Jesus' physical body was buried in a physical grave, but Jesus is a human spirit. And as a dead human spirit now, because our sins are laid upon him, he enters Sheol, or hell, or Hades, out of the belly of Sheol, he said. And this is not a picture of paradise with these waves and, and this water all surrounding him and everything else. It's a picture of a man that's being tormented, and it's a type and shadow of Jesus in hell. Then he said, and I remembered the Lord, and my prayer went up to your holy temple. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. But now this is Jesus speaking in verse 9. This is not Jonah. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Jesus vowed to pay the death penalty for our sins so we could be free from sin and not have to go to hell and spend eternity with him in heaven. I will pay, I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. So the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah unto the, unto the dry ground. So then, after three days and three nights in hell, Jesus, the, the demands of the law have been, or well, not even, the demands of justice have been met. The demand of the law required his death, and justice demands three days and three nights in hell to suffer the wrath and judgment of God for our sins so that we wouldn't have to go to hell. So, our, so, the wrath of God, so Jesus suffered the wrath and judgment of God for us so we don't have to ever suffer it again. Now, as soon as he was resurrected from the dead, now remember when the blood covenant was cut on Calvary's cross, they both, up gave, both gave up the rights to their own lives. Well, now, now in first Hebrews 13, 20, now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant is how Jesus was resurrected from the dead. Because now God's life enters into Jesus, and Jesus' life is God's life, and now Jesus, the, the demands of justice have been met, so now he's resurrected from the dead. And sin, death, and Satan could not hold him in hell. Couldn't hold him. He's been resurrected. And he's also been given the name of Jesus. So I personally believe that, that he disarmed, then of course he, he has the name of Jesus, and so Colossians 2.15, he disarms principality powers, he makes a public spectacle of them, and I just personally believe that every knee in hell had to bow and every tongue confessed that he was Lord to the glory of God the Father. I can't find anywhere else in scripture where hell had to bow their knees and confess that Jesus was Lord. Because remember, and being found in the appearance of man, he became beaten upon death, he death the cross, therefore God holds us, and given the name is above every name. The name of Jesus, every knee had to bow, of those in heaven, and those on earth, and those under the earth. That's hell. That's the only time I see in the scriptures where that could have been used in hell, was when Jesus was resurrected. Well, anyway, you check it out yourself. <laughs> I, I'm just saying that's my opinion, okay? All right, but now, what really is scriptural then is this is a biggie. Whoa, and I see that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I tell you what, I ran over three minutes one time, I'll cut it short one minute this time. This is, uh, so you'll be blessed in everything that you had to do, and I'll see you in the next session.